Let's do it. How's it all been? Let's do it. Oh, it's been going good. Had a pretty good day today. We had a yard show at my grandma's house. So. Oh, you're hanging out at grandma's. Yeah. Nice. Got a guitar with you? Uh, I have one over here. If you want me to get it. No, it's up to you. I mean, look. So the way this call goes, it's it's similar to it's just the coaching call. So it's like whatever you right. want um, help on, we will we will figure it out. Like whatever question you have, you know, you've got like up to an hour to vibe out with me and see what we can do to help improve your playing and figure out your goals or whatever. Okay. Um. Uh. For to start off, I have a question. Um. Oh, wow. So. That's if cool. you were me, what would you do? If I were next? if I were you, what would I do when it comes to what practicing and like the goal is like what's your goal first? So, so uh, I I would like to make money and become like a full time musician uh, somehow. I don't know the ins and outs of that. Which way would be better to do it? Whether gigging or content creation or a different avenue, I don't know about yet. Perfect. Okay, so that's really easy so it, to be a full-time musician you just have to earn enough money like per week right there's no like there's so many different versions of being full-time that like you could be touring with like the best artists in the world and you'll make like a thousand dollars a weekend you know some some people like that's how much they make or you could be a person who runs a little guitar studio teaching and then gigs on the weekends and you'll make triple that amount so it's like, you know, it just depends on the lifestyle that you want. So I'm more biased be towards things that I know how to do because I just know exactly how that path looks. I I haven't played with, you know, a famous artist or anything and toured the world or anything like that. I have an idea of how to do it, but I was never willing to make that sacrifice. Um, actually, no, my roommate did it. So like I know exactly what that looks like. Um, and that looked like he practiced, you know, six to ten hours a day every day for like eight years and then and then he was creative on socials and he used to do like piano remixes of their stuff and then chain smokers picked him up and took him on tour when they had a live band so like that's like highest echelon of how you get the gig like he got the gig through content like he created really great content and then people got awareness to him and then he got out there otherwise like you're just gonna have to work your way up through the local scene but we'll jump into what i would do if i was you you're now 16 almost and in, in three months all right dude you're almost there let's go um so basically what you want to do is you want to accumulate knowledge on like super basic music knowledge um and then immediately look and see if you can find a place that you can teach at after school like some music school or something, just find something, be like, hey, I'm a musician, I'm really comfortable teaching big beginners and I want to get some work experience, start doing that. Would be your very first step to start making money. So like one of the easiest uh, ways to make money uh, is to teach beginners how to play. And then the only thing you need to do uh, to be a, a good good teacher is be a nice person and be slightly better than what they are. That's it. Like there's, there's no like you need to go to Berkeley and now you can go and teach. It's like, no, when I first started teaching, I had just finished high school and I was in my first year at uni and I was like, um, there was a guitar store that like needed some people to teach stuff. And I was like, oh, sure. Well, here's how you do it. Pretty similar to probably the guy who teaches you guitar, right? Right. right. So literally follow his path, even just ask him, hey, I want to do what you do. Um, do you know what the best way for me to go about it is? Or do you know of any place that I could go that I could earn like minimum? Like they're going to, the schools are going to love people like you who are very like interested in learning and interested in like teaching and things like that. You do that, yes. you're going to immediately get put into a place where, and on top of that, they're going to give you like very little money, but it's still going to be better than you working at McDonald's. And you're going to be reinforcing your basics. Like the tricks, the trick to music is being able to really understand your basics to a level of like, you know, you know where the triads are, you know where the notes are. You're like, I can move around here everywhere. I'm like super confident. Bam. You're not stressing about like where your chords, like where the chords are going to fit, where like they fit in the number system. You're just going to be so on. 
Um, and sure. when you have to explain things to people, you learn even more because you have to really know what you're talking about. And then you'll be like, oh, and this, by the way, this doesn't mean you have to know everything first. This means you will tell, tell someone something and be like, oh my God, I actually don't really know this. You know, like when I did my theory course just now, I recorded the, I recorded it already. I recorded the whole thing and then I scrapped it and read it. Cause I was like, this is not right. <laughs> like the information, the information was correct, but it was like, this is not the correct way to, to explain this. So then I was like, oh wait, I actually need to redo this because like someone who has more context to what I do would understand it. But a complete beginner would have no clue. That'd be like, oh, move a whole step. They're like, what's a whole step? What's a tone? Don't know what a tone is. <laughs> what's a triad? You know, things like that. So it's like you you will find the holes in your knowledge when you start explaining to people and you'll be like, oh, cool. And as long as you take those feedback loops as a little as a beginning teacher, you'll take them in and you'll be like, oh, cool. The next time I have a student, I can do this, blah, blah, blah. But I will have like, so that's that's one way immediately to do it to make money. Um, so anyone can do it. Uh, I have had uh, multiple students um, become teachers and like they, he was literally like, I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't want to go to university or anything. I was like, well, why don't you just be a teacher um, within like, I think it took him like uh, two months of being a teacher. He was already earning like nearly a thousand dollars a week just teaching like yeah. and all he was doing is music like making money and then um he was hesitant to get into gigging and like if he had a gotten into gigging at the same time as uh, as his teaching he would have been making like 1500 2000 dollars a week which is a really really good wage like sure. a lot of people like spend years going through careers to try and get there and they, they just don't so so that will that will buy you a lot of guitars <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically the first step while you when you're 16 is going to be, all right, I'm going to see if I can find any place that will hire me to teach, begin teaching. Um, the second thing that you can do is immediately start making content. Start documenting your journey. Be like, hey, literally copy exactly what I'm doing. I am documenting my journey to become an exceptional musician and then eventually write a hit song. That would be like, whew. Like if I pull it off, that'd be glorious. But I'm going to do all the steps that I know how to do and I will do that. Now you just need to be like, I just want to get good at music. And then you just document, oh, today I learned this. And then just post a video. Um, like just look at exactly what I do. And if you just copy what I do, um, like figure out the content that you can copy and then just do that. Um, and then the other thing as well for the teaching thing you have my courses. They're all free. Literally, when you have a student, you don't even have to show them the courses. You could just be like, oh, well, I already know this is going to work. So I'm just going to teach them exactly how the one teaches the free course. Literally just steal it and make heaps of money. That's what it's there for. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> like, I truly don't care. I just want you to, I just want everyone to win. So like, you can just go in take everything, every note that I have on how to sing and play guitar, how to play guitar, how to do music theory, how to perform, how to loop. If you literally go through the courses and learn them yourself, you can then just copy paste with random people and it will work. Um, okay. The only thing you would have to do is just add like songs, be like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I have got in the course how to do like GCD. I'm going to look at a bunch of course songs that have GCD and those will be the my beginner songs I teach. And you'll have like a, a bank of like five to 10 songs you will teach beginners how to play. For me, it was always shotgun. Shotgun was like the easiest one. I could get uh, like from from his age, the youngest age I could get a kid to play was five. Um, and they could play and sing it within one lesson. So it's like, yeah, that's it's super easy. Like literally my whole guitar course, you go through that and you just like teach people how to play guitar and it'll, you'll make good. You'll start making like at the beginning, you'll start making like a hundred bucks a week and then it'll be 200, then three, four, 500. And then you'll be like, oh, well now this is actually taking up like 10 hours or 15 hours a week of my time, but I am making like $500 a week. This is great. You know? And then you can be like, as long as you're not like, oh, cool. Now I can go and buy those sneakers and I can go and do this, blah, blah, blah. The first thing you go is like, all right, I need to reinvest in my gear. And you just think in like long term. So 
that teaching part is the first part. The second part is the content because you want to be able to start creating a feedback loop. The fact that you have my school and you've been posting in it and then you're also doing the Feedback Fridays regularly, you're going to crush. Like I didn't have that. If I could get someone who had my experience and I could just literally post a video, I mean, I had insecurity, so I probably wouldn't have. Um, but to have access to that immediately and to get like free like Berkeley education level, it's like, bro, just take advantage of it. Um, my goal is to make it like very, very successful. So there will be a point where it won't be as accessible. But the fact that you participate in it, like you got this lesson. So you, I think right. monthly... Like people are going to have a hard time competing against you because you're going to be posting heaps and you're going to be engaging in the community. So like, I think, uh, I think if you can do that with the school, that's a, that's like obviously a free feedback loop that you can get. Then the other one will be like you create content and then that's going to give you like a, for me, the content creation has been like the most insane thing I've ever done in my entire life. Like it's, uh, like the, the speed of learning is like, oh man, I heard the best definition for it the, uh, yesterday. It was, it was, it's just like you're putting in inputs, and then you're you're taking whatever the inputs are in, and then like the outputs, you're like dealing with the feedback of what that is, learning from it, and then putting back in. The more at bats you can do of that, the faster the feedback loop is for you. You will get better quicker. That's it. That's the only thing that determines whether you're going to get good fast or not. It's not like, do you have a God-given talent to play guitar or anything like that? It's like, no, can you post a video of you playing and be like, cool, I posted that. I can see this mistake, this mistake. All right, next time I'm going to come back and do that. Uh, like you're just, if you do that a thousand times, you will just crush. Because a lot of people might do like a thousand at-bats or like a thousand shows but their feedback loop might be one every 100 or 200. They might be like, oh, actually, maybe that's not that good. Because then maybe they, they, they might have like recordings of them and they'll look back and like, oh, yeah, that's weird. Like the song is played. I'll, I'll give you one feedback loop for eight years, I would say, eight or nine years. Actually, no, maybe 10 years. I played Under the Bridge on wrong. I had, it took me teaching a student how to play under the bridge recently, like five or six years ago. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, the, the tab says it's this. And I was like, I'm the teacher. I know what I'm talking about. And then I was like, you know what? I've been wrong in the past. Let's put up the recording. And then I was like, played the recording. It was the wrong chord. And I was like, sure. <laughs> So it took me 10 years to listen back to the recording and to listen back to my own playing and then evaluate and be like, oh, wow, Luan, you're stupid. Let's fix that. And, um, you know, whereas like now, if I were learning a song, I would like learn and then I'd be like, I think this is it. And then I would go back and check. Actually, we did that. Um, I don't know if you remember in the last stream on Friday, uh, we were right. learning espresso. No, not espresso. The, uh, oh, what's the song? Uh, I can't remember, replay back, was whatever the Sabrina Carpenter song was. And and I was like, oh, yeah, cool. It's like a two to a one and then to a diminished. And then I was like, wait, no, I'm wrong. And then I, I thought it was that. And then I went back and, and then within like two minutes, I was like, actually, no, I'm wrong. It needs to be this. And then I was like, actually, I'm wrong again. And then I got it right. So it's like, so you can see that in, in this span of like 10 minutes, my feedback, I'm not like, I'm not sitting there being like, oh, okay, like what I'm doing is correct. Like I'm always questioning. I'm like, did I hear something wrong? Because once I have more information, I'm like, all right, cool. Well, now there's a, there's a different path. But a lot of people, they all be like, oh, they just ignore the information. And it's much easier to just be like, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, and especially if you're a musician, like if you've been, if you get to like 30, 40 songs, and you can sing them and you can play in bars and you immediately start playing in bars and you're getting one or two bar, bar gigs a week. There is no incentive for you to get better aside from competition, taking your spot or, um, uh, no, it's actually just that competition, taking your spot because no one's going to pay you more. So like in my town, I would never get paid more to play a bar show 
even if I learned more songs and I was better engagement, I was better performing, I got paid the exact same amount when I started gigging at the same venue to now if I went and played at that venue. But the difference between Luan is like night and day. Right. So it's like, so like a lot of musicians get stuck and they just don't take on that feedback process. So if you can create that for yourself and you can begin the process of like, I'm going to like, get like feedback and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn you're just going to crush so fast and it might take you three years but bro if you can graduate high school and immediately be like oh cool i can make you know 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a year like just playing music there's kids that graduate berkeley that can't do that and that's and that's like the the really disappointing thing so like i i had to learn it the hard way Um, but you are going to have like, if you just listen to what I say, you're going to be able to like, and you already do, and you apply so many things. That's why you're getting so much better. So I don't know what your ecosystem of musicians around you are saying, but from my perspective, it looks like you're getting a lot better, a lot faster. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure that they're reacting and being like, oh, wow, I didn't really, like, you really must be practicing. This is cool. Yeah. And I think just, uh, submitting it and, uh, getting feedback from you really helps so much. So. Yeah, I can I can only give that to you. It's perfect. It's it's amazing cuz every time you guys post the content and then I give feedback, I get better at giving feedback. And then then I make better content and I make better courses and I make better stuff. Like so I'm benefiting just as much. So right. Even the feedback Fridays, the whole concept of it, I'm like this is going to be so awesome. Like already it's just crushing. I'm like there might be a time where we do a feedback Friday and it goes for like five hours because I'm just going to be like, there's a lot of stuff to go through. <laughs> but we don't know. We'll see. But so essentially that's the first two things. Now the third thing that I would recommend you do is exactly what I was saying to Simon. Um, you go to, um, well, I this is, this is one thing I don't know. Like uh, as, as a person of faith, do you guys, like do you and your family feel uncomfortable like you going out to bars and playing and things like that? Um, yeah, kind of, it's, it's frowned upon. So, okay. I, yeah. But, yeah. um, I, that, that's a look, Hey, I, I totally understand. Like my whole family, they're all, all Muslim. And like my auntie is like, you're the devil, the one for playing guitar. Now she loves me, <laughs> but she's like, she's like, I love you, but whatever you're doing in your life, it's, it's the devil stuff. And I'm like, Oh my God, like I, I can't, yeah. can't do much about this, <laughs> but so that's that's where I'm like, that that's where it might be tricky. So like if if within your faith, and that's totally fine, you do not have to go and do that. You just have to be like, okay, well, there's gonna you're gonna have to be more creative. Like to get into the bar scene and doing all that kind of stuff, you will have to um, like learn a bunch of songs, and then like find the top songs to, to learn, and then you would just learn them, and then you go and play in these bars and stuff like that. But if that's not what you you can do. Um, you can always like pick that up at any time in your career. If you're like, actually, I just need to make a dollar. Like, I just don't care where I play. Um, then you can always jump in on that and that will, I'll have a course completely for that by that, that time. Like I'm hoping it would be in months, you know, and then you can check that out when you're 18 or 21 or whatever. Now, if you were wanting to make money as a player, um, you need to be exceptional. Like, and when I say exceptional, um, you need to be exceptional on the path of listenable. So you need to be exceptional in areas of you're a nice guy, which you already are. So you need to be a nice guy. You need to not understand your place in the band. You know how we were going through your performance and being like, oh, you know, don't overplay here, don't play that. If you're the guy that can just like lay it in, like great rhythm player, that's the guy who gets paid. I'll tell you what. You know, no one want, no one's hiring the dude who can get up there and shred like crazy. Because that person, that person is is thinking about them. And when you've got like, especially in your in your music, when you've got like these vocalists singing these really important lyrics, like there are like some sometimes the lyrics are actual scripture, like you are going through verses of the Bible or things like that. You the last thing you want is some guitarist like going <laughs> like yeah. ripping over it. But, you know, watching that, um, uh, the Jimmy gems or whatever guy, um, you can see he's just like in, and he knows yeah, exactly sure. when 
he can do that. And so you're really lucky that that guy is posting content because if you're like, hey, how do I make money in this like environment? You literally just go through every video that he has and just watch everything that he does and copy everything that he does and start analyzing it and writing it down. And you could even, if you wanted to, be like, hey, like post in the school community and be like, hey, I um I just went through this video and these were the notes that I picked up that he was doing. Do you have any more insight on what he's doing that I could learn from? And then I will look at your notes and then I'll be like, all right, these are the things that Caleb's not seeing. And then I can be like, hey, he actually did this, this and this, and this is why he's really, really good, you know? And so he is living his best life playing worship music in a really epic, I don't know what, what the scale of those productions are, but it looks really, really big and cool. Yeah. But it looks like one of those mega church things. I don't know much about that whole ecosystem, but when I see his content, because he's an Australian, and I don't know why it picked up. I, I'm so confused why my algorithm brought all that content onto my Instagram. But for some reason, I was just getting like all the church bands posting. Uh, actually, I, I think I know. I was looking at um, Isa Isaiah Sharkey, who's a really, really good uh, guitarist. He plays for John Mayer and stuff. But he's part of that like gospel crew and they do a lot of like church stuff. And then I got like really into the church bands because I was like, man, these musicians are so tight. Like, wow, this is so good. So... Um, I don't know how the financial ecosystem of that works, but I can tell you if you are a nice person, so you work to be like a nice, I'll tell you how you get really good at doing that. There's a book called, uh, how to, how to make friends and influence people. Have you heard of that book? I think I've might have before, but I haven't looked into it. Anymore. Okay. You go and buy that book and then you read the book. And then every three months you come back and read it till you really got it down. Cause being nice is a skill. Like being able to, when someone comes near you, being able to smile, learning how to remember names, learning to be like, oh man, and learning how to see the positives in people. We get trained, I mean, I got trained my whole life to see the negatives. Uh, and part of like Australian culture, there's this thing called tall poppy syndrome. It's like, it, I just learn, I pick up on like ecosystems. Like, I don't know why it's just me. I just like try to assimilate quite fast. It's just part of my mental nature or whatever. But we have like a tendency to like cut people down to then stand up. So it's like, instead of building the tallest tower, we're trying to like cut everyone down. And so for me, that was a really hard shift to change mentally. But as soon as I was able to change mentally, then that's what I did. I was just like, just focus on me being exceptional and then learn how to see all the amazing things that other people are doing and compliment them on those things and do all those kinds of things and learn to remember them, learn to be a bit more like the little bit of effort that it, that you go into being a nice human, which is weird that like people just don't train it. Um, yeah. It, it just pays dividends, man. The amount of amount of times I've gotten a gig for stuff just because people liked me. Like, it's just not even, it's just stupid. I used to get free Starbucks because people just liked, I don't know why. I mean, I know why, because I was like a nice dude. Like, like they were getting like a bunch of people that were constantly having a, a crap day and being rude to them all day because they're working in service and then i walk in and i'm some australian wearing flip-flops and it's like snowing outside and i'm like hey how you doing blah blah blah. and i'm just like and actually the one who i learned this the most from was my granddad because my granddad used to call everyone guy hey guy blah 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 and then he used to like find out their whole life story and it's like oh you look like you're from this where's your family from and they always just like build this really great personal relationship and um like it's such an underrated skill. So like learning how to build empathy, learning how to be nice, learning how to engage with people, learning how to actually listen. Um, that is like one crazy amazing skill that is going to carry your whole entire life. And when it comes to music, it's just like the most underrated reason <laughs> why people get gigs. <laughs> Cause there's a lot of people that can play, but when you're sitting in a, in a studio with them, when you're like setting up with them, sound checking with them, hanging out in green room with them, that there's a lot of time that gets spent. Like even if you look at my band, like we have to sit in a car and drive for like nine hours. 
the last thing I want to do is have people in my car that that piss me off. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. And, <laughs> and for me, they're like, they're so great because they they like bounce off each other and they have like the this level of banter that I just sit there while driving and I just laugh. It's just like entertaining the whole time. Hearing them talk yeah. about video games, their live like this it's just they're funny as. And then yeah. I and they keep up like tell me all their problems with like trying to play Elden Ring and all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I wish I could get a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that so that's that skill. So read that book, the How to Influence oh. uh, Make Friends and Influence uh People by Mike Carnegie. I think that's his name. Um Michael Carnegie, I can't remember it. Anyway. That book, you, you, if you read that book, you'll be successful. It's like straight up. It's one of those books that is timeless. It's just like all the skills in there you will learn. Um, so that's the first part. Be likable. Um, to and but when I say likable, do not be like people pleaser. No, no one likes a people pleaser. That's that's only going to set you up for failure. You want to have great self esteem, not esteem. You don't want you don't want to build your success off of other people's opinion of you. That's going to make it really, really hard for you to create content and do things like that. You need to be so insular in your beliefs. Just be that, you know, you know where you need to go. You know what you need to do and you don't let other people compromise that. And then you just be kind um, to everyone outside of that. And then if people hate you for it, because people will be insecure, that's a really crazy superpower to have. And the more you tap into it, there will be people that will backlash at it and be like, I don't like, that's crazy. No one could be like that. That will happen. So just be aware that that will happen. And then, so once you've got the the likable part down, that's a huge pillar that's going to get you a lot of work as a player. The other one is just know it. Know the basics. Know your triads. I'm not saying like, where are all the triads in every single position? I mean like, jump into the songs that you regularly play in church or whatever, and anywhere you're going to be playing in, whatever song, whatever in instance you're going to be jumping into whatever the songs are be able to play them in multiple positions on the fretboard that is the only way you need to do triad practice you don't need to be able to like all right here's my first position try like no it's just like all right i'm gonna play brown eyed girl how, how about i play brown eyed girl from the seventh fret i can't use anything down here and then how can i play brown eyed girl from the ninth fret i can't use anything down here and you will learn to find voicings and you will learn to like actually work your triad brain and then eventually a lot of it becomes muscle memory. Like for me, it's very easy for me to find triads. Um, and I will have that mastery course up hopefully soon. I say everything soon. It's going to be a meme at this point in our community of like, oh, yeah, it'll be up soon. It's like, yeah, fucking skeletons everywhere. <laughs> like <laughs> Waiting for Luan to post the content course, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like so, so knowing your basics is the most important thing. But knowing your basics, I'm not talking about like mastering theory. I mean mastering the basics to execute on music that you need to play. Like you don't need to be able to recount like every single scale and play every mode. And like that does not serve you. But being able to play these songs that you're performing in so well that say a piano player walks in, you're like, oh, cool, the piano player's in here. That means they've got all the bass covered and they've got majority of like, you know, the first fret to the fifth fret locked in. Right. So it's like, well, where do I go now? So now this is where you're like, oh, well, I've got a piano player, so I need to be able to do, you know, maybe I'll just do like thirds and sevenths and maybe I'll just do like a third and a root note and then I'll do like these dyad things and I'll just do like double stops here and here and there or maybe like an arpeggiated line. That sounds good. And you're focusing more on the tone and how you can fit over the top of it. But then as soon as the piano player is gone, it's just you, guitar, and so it's like bass, guitar, you, and a drummer or something like that. Or you need an acoustic song with someone, immediately you can fill that whole space. And you're like, yeah, 100% know the song. Here you go. Here's the open chords. I can fill that out. Or say it's like I'm playing through the song and I'm like playing closed position, majority of the song, and then there's this gigantic swell, big uplift that's about to happen, which typically happens in your style of music. You know that you can start bringing down lower and then start opening up the guitar and doing big open string chords and things like that. And then that will be like the whole time you've been like closed and then open. So even if it is stepping on the piano, it's at the right time. So now you're all lifting together and they will respect that. So, so that's, that's what I mean by knowing your basics is like really knowing your music and knowing how your instrument fits over that music. 
because that's the vehicle to get you there. I'm not a I'm not a gigantic guitar fan. I don't sit down and be like, I can't wait to like learn all this guitar stuff. I'm like, I actually don't care. Um, but what I do care about is like mastering the vehicle that gets me to where I need to go musically. That's all I care about. Guitar is just the vehicle. If I could play piano as good as I play guitar, I'd play piano. I just, I wouldn't care. Like if I could just sequence as well as I could, I would just do that. But I just do path of least resistance, get the musical output. And that's that's how you want to think of it. So if you're just likable and then you're really, really good at your um your craft, you crush. And like that is, the, it's as simple as that. And then just be patient. <laughs> because at one point it might be one gig and then you just keep practicing. And as long as you can keep your head down and like, the best defini- definition of um, patience is like finding what to do in the meantime is is it. And as long as the, the thing that you're doing in the meantime is getting better at the thing that's going to get you further ahead, <laughs> it's yeah. like you win. But a lot of people don't have that. They're like, I, it needs to happen now. It needs to happen now. And they're like pushing it, pushing it. It's like, no, it just takes time. Like, that's the process. Yeah, that's the process. So like those three things is what I would do if I was you right now. Like, okay. um, like that's the, me- like the, the core mechanical, like you do those three pillars of like, you know, you start learning how to teach and you start learning how to create content for your own feedback loop. And then you start mastering your craft to play with people and to get better. And then like learning how to sing, learning how to do it. Like the more skills you can acquire, you already play drums, you already play guitar. That makes you deadly. And if you can kind of play guitar, then you can kind of play super basic bass. So you become very, very like, you know, diverse in your skill set, being able to fill multiple roles depending on what people need. And that makes you even more valuable. If you can sing and do vocal harmonies or even just sing yourself, that's like the highest leverage skill. Like being an exceptional singer and player is like a money printing machine. Like it's just, if you can sing and play guitar, it's easy, especially in this world. And the, I mean, the other thing would be DJing, um, but DJing is quite competitive. It, it'd be more as adding it as an extra skill uh, where you know you sing and play and then you understand how DJing works so that on your breaks you can actually execute. But that's more for like playing pub gigs and stuff, which doesn't matter to you right now. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the exact framework I would go under. That's like the mechanical, like, uh, like that'd be like the pillars to do that are more action oriented. The part to it is like, if you can't execute on those three things, then there's a mental blockage that's holding you back. So figuring out what that is, is the challenge. For me, I had horrible self-esteem. Like I found it very, very hard to be proud of what I did because I was super, super set on outcomes. And I, and I had, I was always worried about what people thought and things like that. And that really held me back on my music. And then the second I was able to flip it and be like, okay, well, they could either say I'm fantastic or they could say I'm garbage. Either way, if I only care about practicing and I only care about doing it, um, like when I post a video, my thought process is like, it's either going to, people are going to love it or they're going to hate it. And either way, I will post it. And if they hate it or love it, it doesn't matter because it will be a documentation that this is what it sounded like here. And in 10 years, I will sing that song again and it will be better. And I'm right. hoping that they will like it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and they don't see it either. So, if you, if you know you put like a ton of effort in, then you know you'll grow along the way. So. Yeah. So, for me, everything I do right now at this point, I'm like, cool, none of it matters. Like, let's just like experiment and try. Like, I mean, you saw me just build a whole school and then be like, oh, well, that was a bad idea. Not a bad idea, but I was like, it definitely could work, but it, I had to make the real decision of like, oh, I just spent all this time building this framework and all this stuff. And it definitely does not align with my goals. And I was like, ah, damn, I can fix it again, you know, but that's me not focusing on the outcome. I was just focusing on the inputs, which is great. But then also because I'm only focused on the inputs, I'm not mad that that failed, you know, 
because right. all I did was just like repackage it, put it into the free school. And now the free school is even just like growing and crushing better now. I'm like, it's getting more and more involved. And as I do more of that, it'll be even better. So, and you can leverage that and say like, join the free school because you know, you get free feedback and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I think we will make the community like a dollar a month just because I'm scared of bots and I'm scared of trolls, but right. not, not I'm scared of it, but I'm also like, I don't want you guys posting videos and stuff and then having like that kind of level of hate, you know, I'm comfortable <laughs> with it, but I don't know about our community. I can't speak for other people. It's, it's, it's so amazing that there's so many fearless people to post content and, and share their experience. And I'm like, I, I want to protect y'all. <laughs> So that that's the only thing I would say is like outside of the like three pillars that we're talking about, making sure your mind is like locked in, which you do quite a lot of mindfulness stuff. Um, not in the sense of like, I don't want you to be consuming content and doing like, oh, Luan means like, all right, now I need to watch all these videos and you spend hours. Doing, I'm like, no, it just means like, just be aware that if there is a bottleneck on something and you're not making action, there's some fear there's some some form of insecurity. There's something that's holding you back from taking the action. Like if you're scared to walk up to a music school because you're like 16 to be like, hey, I want to teach beginners how to play music. Um, do you have a place for me? Or even willing to try me out for free so I can learn. Um, like if that's something that scares you, you need to assess it because being able to throw at bats and fail is like the most amazing thing that you can ever build in, in your confidence skill set. Because school doesn't arm you for that. School is just like a linear path. Like, all right, you're going to do your science exam. These are the things you need to learn. Do the exam and then you get a grade for it. Whereas the real world is just like, you could do it a million ways, man. If you want to make money as a musician, you could go and teach. You could go this. You could play gigs. You can write, you know, like there's just so many ways. There's, there's guitarists making heaps of money because they make memes about them buying guitars. I haven't seen the guy right. post a video of him playing guitar once, but he makes really funny memes of like, you know, like, oh, my wife, how I expect my wife to react when I buy a new guitar. And she's like, oh my God, this is so good. Yeah. You know, just like, you just don't know. Like, and so that's where like, whatever is holding you back mentally, you just need to address that. So those three things, and then be like, all right, if I can't do any of one of these three things, what's holding me back? And that's how you kind of want to like circulate um, your process. But that's what I would do if I was 16. And just realize that you've got so much time. And the fact that you're thinking about this at like 16 is insane. Um, like if you do this within three years, you'll just be so like you just won't have to think about stuff. Like you'll be like, oh, this is wicked. You know, I'm like 18, 19 and I can play in any band that I want to play in because your brain compounds its value. Like right. if, if you are the thing that you're working towards, then it will always be more and more valuable. You're, you're never going to go down in value. As soon as you hit a point where you know, oh, I can, I can teach 20 students a week and I can make this much money, you're like, well, that's the benchmark. It never goes less. You don't, get, right. you don't, you don't learn how to be a worse teacher. I mean, you might become a, like a... That's a personal thing, but like the skill set to be able to teach 20 people, it won't change. The skill set to play 40 songs won't change. Like as soon as you acquire it, it stays there forever. And you only, and if you keep feeding it, it will compound and get more and more and more and more and more. And then you kind of like jump into the space of like, oh, well, how can I scale these things? And then you learn more skills. But say you're at a place where you're like, oh, well, I can always make $50,000 a year playing music. You never go down. And then you're just like, all right, how can I get to the next level? And then you just keep working towards that. And at such a young age, you, you'll you crush it. Like I had to start doing that at 29. Yeah, 28. Where was it? Oh, was I 28? Yeah, 28 was when I started trying to make money in music. So it's like I had to build a career at 28 and <laughs> had to learn these things very quickly. <laughs> So would you say like the fear of like not of taking action was the thing that held you back the most? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. That was for me. I don't know for other people, but like full transparency, I grew up in an incredibly narcissistic environment. 
and like everything like when I got accepted to Berkeley the reaction from my family was oh anyone can get accepted into Berkeley if you didn't get a scholarship you like it, it doesn't mean anything and I'm like oh cool like all those like hundreds of hours I practiced in the studio woke up at 6 a.m you know like drove into the studio practice I used to practice from 6 a.m to like uh, 10 a.m in the studio and then I would go to my classes because my classes all within that studio and then I would finish the uni and then in the evenings I would be doing all the projects, jamming with people, practicing some more. And then that's how I got into Berkeley. And I got accepted right. and then I got told I'm a failure. Like anyone can do it. And I'm like, cool. Like, but that was the ecosystem I was in. Every time I used to come back from Berkeley or I'd have to have a phone call, it would be like, have you made it yet? And I'm like, <laughs> You can't make it in Berkeley. You can't make it. Like I didn't have the skills. So it's like, so like that was, that was my mindset. And like, that's my fault. Like truly is like, I just didn't arm myself with the skills to handle that. And it took me, but, took, took me till I was 28, 29 to, to do that. But the big catalyst for of, me, what was that? Some of that was probably the environment though. So once you kind of got out of that space and, you know, probably kind of saw it in a different light and helped you grow from that. Yeah, I mean, look, the friends and the family that you keep, like, truly matter. And, like, and I say family quite harshly, but it's the truth. Like, right. if you've got really toxic family, I'm not saying, like, don't talk to them. Um, I'm saying, like, if you can limit yourself and your experience with them, if they're not going to help you get to where you need to go, and, like, you've got a great heart and a, you're a nice person like I'm you're not gonna you're not aiming to to hurt people but other people will find insecurity around you winning like and if, as soon as those people will start appearing and you start seeing that happening if the the skill that I had to develop was being ruthless with that and and I I just don't have friends <laughs> at this at this point no I mean like like full transparency I just don't have any friends like I I have like a couple of like old school friends that I talk to every now and then um but for me I was like all right I want to be a great dad and then I was like all right so everyone who was in my environment that was going to like affect my children's lives and the way that they they grew up and or if anyone was disrespecting my wife or anything like that I was like I will I just I just axed everything and I, I did like the, the, the most hardcore purge ever. And then that allowed me to like eliminate all that distraction. And then I was able to focus more on my stuff. And then that was when I was able to start building more confidence for myself, build my self-esteem. And now I can let those, those things come in. But now there's like a, now I'm walking around like full armor. I'm like, I'm good, man. Like, Anytime someone says like dumb shit like that, like before it affected me, I'm like, I don't, just don't care. Like I wake up in the morning, the only person I care about is my child and my wife and they don't care whether I'm good at music. So <laughs> like every time I pick up a guitar, my daughter is like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Anyway, let's go play another game. <laughs> you know? So like that for me was the big unlock was when I had a family or when family, like my own family that, that I was, I was starting was like a huge catalyst for that mental shift. So right. that I wouldn't expect you to relate to that at like 16, but like if you're wondering like, what did I do and like, how did that affect me? Like, that's what I had to go through. And um, yeah, once I got through that, it, it was like smooth sailing, but each time I would have like little wins and then big setbacks, little wins, then big setbacks, little wins, then big setbacks. But but like at this point, like I'm pretty accustomed to bad things happening and then still moving forward. Like car broke down on Wednesday. That's a $3,000 fix. Uh, we just got a crack in the house. It might look like mold or asbestos, which means that's now a $40,000 fix immediately on the house. And then as I was leaving the house today, our power was flickering last night and today. And that most likely means our power, um, our whole power, power panel is completely failing and that's another ten thousand dollar fix so that's pretty scary yeah. to jump in and have that and then my dad got sick a couple of weeks ago um like it's just that is life 
but learning how to be like the outputs of life are not going to like stop me from being like, well, I, I mean, I have my bad days where I'm not super motivated, but I'm also just like, well, just post another video, just play another song, just enjoy this moment with your child and just hang out with your wife. Like those things keep things in balance and then usually things work out. <laughs> Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Yeah. I mean, well, I wouldn't say I would hope for the, the best, but it's also just like do the things. Right. And take action. And just exactly. Play. Like you're just, you're moving forward. Like you're going to have points where you audition for things and don't get the part. You want to play in a band. You can't get into the band. You ask the school to teach them. They don't hire you. You might be working okay. at the school. They fire you. You just don't know. There's going to be all of these things. And it and it's like it's it's a rocky cut scene. It's like it's not how many, how many times you get hit, it's about how many times you get back up. <laughs> as cliche as that is, but that is it. Like if you can build a, a brain that can handle that, like that's a superpower when you're young. Because a right. lot of um a lot of us learn that later in life when we have responsibilities. Um, because the responsibilities are like you either do it or you're screwed. Mm-hmm. And it's like that it's, it is that like, like I will have to figure out a way to make more money or I will have to like do these things if these expenses come out this way or I'll have to take on debt and then I will have to work extra and then do that. So like you might see me posting like two or three pieces of content a day um, trying to get like people to come in and like join or pay for like coaching calls or whatever whatever mechanism or come into the stream and subscribe like i will do all the things that will healthily grow an income and then i will be marketing to do all the shows in my town and then if it means that i have to go and play at every crappy bar and get paid the same as the people who don't give a shit about music i'll still do it i'll still rock up and i'll still do the four hour gigs if i need to do it i will show up like, like it's like that's something that that you have to learn and um if you can learn that early without the responsibilities then it's really good because you can set yourself up once you do have the responsibilities you're like this is easy i got this you know so yeah. so that's more of like a life lesson but i don't know if that's going to help you right away yeah i i think it will i think it will <laughs> you think it will hell yeah well, the music stuff I know will definitely help you right away, but that stuff, that's more just like, that's what I had to go through. So hopefully it helps you. Don't make my mistakes. Learn from me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So when you're asking some question of like, what do I do now? Like, that's what I recommend. But did you have a second question? Because <laughs> we, um, we, can, we can do a speed round uh, before yeah. I have to go. So, um, how, how do you think you make the most around being other musicians? How, how to make the most of being around other musicians? Yes. Learn and ask questions. Ask questions. Okay. Yeah. And watch what they do. And like, don't look at, don't compare yourself to the, I mean, comparison is fantastic. You want to compare to people that are better than you because you want to see where the gap is. That's the best. That's what comparison is. But don't use comparison as like an ego thing, like trying to feel like, oh, like, man, because this is a thing. I don't know if other guitarists still do. I mean, I don't know if people do this. I, this is what I did when I was insecure. I used to see someone who was playing and I'd be like, oh, my God, that's really good. I can't do that. And then instead of being like, oh, my God, that's amazing. How did you do that? And like become friends with them and ask them and learn from them. I was like trying to find the thing that they couldn't do that I could do and be like, okay, cool. It's all good. <laughs> so I don't know if you've ever gone through that feeling, but that's typically what I did. And again, that's a tall, pop, tall poppy thing, you know, just waiting for them to do, make the mistake and be like, all right, cool. They're not perfect. We're all good. You know? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. It's a human thing. I'm assuming. But if you want to get better, it's just looking at them and learning from them and asking the questions like, um, when I was gigging, like there was like three, like two, I can give you two recent instances where it happened immediately, uh, three recent instances where it happened. I, the first one, I played guitar for a guy, um, 
and he was an entertainer and he was like a, a better entertainer than I was. And I was like, and he asked me to play guitar for him. I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, like this will be cool. Um, I was not looking at like where was I better than him. My goal in that band was to like make him sound as good as possible. And that's what I did. I was like, hell yeah. And the whole time I was doing it, I was asking him questions about his process and how is he working the crowd and things like that. And I was learning from him watching like and watching how he scripted his movements how he scripted his entertainment how he scripted his engagement with the crowd and i was like oh my god this is a skill and so yeah. then i was able to in that like months even though the the investment of playing for him was like pretty much a waste of time for me um because i got paid like 500 dollars for a gig and it cost me like many many hours of rehearsals and time like liaising and doing all those things um what i learned from him was exceptional you know yeah. And then like another one, a friend moved into town. Well, like I had just met him, like he was moving into town. And then when he moved into town, he walked in and he got every, he literally walked in, never been in town, like in, in our place, Townsville. And he came up from Sydney and he was like this exceptional singer, blah, blah, blah. And he walked in and he just took everything like, Every gig. He walked in first week he was here, five gigs a weekend. Just yeah. slayed. And then as soon as him and his wife started like a like a wedding business uh, to do like events and stuff, they crushed that too. So it was like that was a huge learning experience of being like, oh, my God. Like this is what like being exceptional looks like. And so all I had to do, which was great, like – look at him, ask him questions, learn from him and improve. And every time I had just had like this, you know, this, this marker of like, keep improving, keep improving, keep improving. And I was able to build a really great brand around weddings and events now. Like that's what we do. So it's like mm -hmm. super, super awesome for me. I learned how to do better vocals and I better control and things like, cause I was watching the way he was doing things. And I was like, wow, that's really exceptional. That's so cool. Instead of being like, you know, afraid or insecure. I was like, oh, cool. Like, I'm going to learn a lot right now. So yeah. like those were two instances for me where other musicians really inspired me and like taught me how to get better. But that that's all I can say when it comes to like when you're playing with other musicians or you're around other musicians, the more you learn from them, the better. When I was at Berkeley, I was never trying to sell anything. So this was the perk of my insecurity, right? The perk of my insecurity and failure of like that I was running through in that weird little depression period that I had in my life of like, wow, I'm a failure. I'm never going to do anything, blah, blah, blah. That whole time I was at Berkeley while going through that, I was like, I'm going to be in every single room. I'm going to be friends with everybody. Not that I was like, I need to be your friend because I need like I was just nice uh, and chill. Like my professor ended up crashing at my place for for months while while he because he, he he lost his place to stay in boston and he and he needed he was recording demos and stuff in new york and like i never asked anything of him he just came and he crashed at my place and i would play world of warcraft and he would work on demos now 12 years later he's one of the top songwriters in la he's out there going flying to different countries writing for the top like people you know he's literally room with like ryan tedder they've had like crazy success but because i was willing to sit down and learn from him and watch him and like just be like not try to take and just give he is like one of the nicest guys to me like i will always be able to reach out to him and if i have a question he will always help me like and and recently i did recently i was like hey can you connect me with someone who could teach me how to produce music um, on Ableton and he was like he connected me with a guy who has 1.5 billion streams as a producer <laughs> and I was able yeah. to sit down and learn from this guy and I, I paid the guy to learn he didn't give it to me for free but like I paid him but I had access to that guy I had access to that to that pathway mm -hmm. because I was nice because I wanted to listen more than tell I wasn't telling him like oh you should be writing this stuff. You should be like, I wasn't like 
anything like that. He would show me stuff. He even asked me to play guitar for him. And and I wasn't like, oh, well, dude, you got to pay me like $100 to play guitar on your demo. I was like, dude, whatever you need, man, just let me know. I'll just play. Fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> like, he's like, could you do this? I was like, yeah, man, sure. <laughs> whatever, bang. Like, that's who I was. And so that got me into the room with a lot of people that ended up becoming exceptional. And they always will have a nice regard for me because I'm not someone who's trying to take. Mm -hmm. And so like, if you can think of that towards other musicians, that is the superpower. That's what I was saying about like that make friends and influence people. I hadn't read that book then. Um, I was just already doing quite a few of those things, but like the most grateful thing that I had, um, which was affirmed by one of my professors, um, was that even though I did feel helpless and I wasn't good and I wasn't like the most exceptional guitarist or singer, I just like had zero purpose. I was like, when I got to Berkeley, I was like, oh my God. Like the dis- like I saw where the level, dis- like the difference was. And I was like, wow, I'm like nowhere near you guys. And I was like, holy shit. And like, so someone who has a healthy mindset is like, oh my God, I am nowhere near these people. Let's do two a day. Let's practice double what they do to catch up. Or, But what majority people do, because majority don't have that mindset, they're going to go in and be like, well, I might as well not do it. But for me, even though I was in that mindset, of, I might as well not do it. I still was like, well, I'm here. I might as well show up. And I just showed up. And like, even when I professed this, he was saying like, he's like, you're going to be fine. And I didn't understand what he meant. He's like, you're going to be fine. I see you in every single room and every professor around here. We all talk about it. We already know you're going to be completely fine. Whatever you figure out to do is going to be great because you're in every room. You're asking all the questions and you're there to learn. He's like, you're not there to sell. You're not there trying to like become an artist or anything. Like we've, I've had, I've been so blessed to be sitting in a room with like Jason Isbell, Brad Paisley, Brent Mason, Mike Posner, a and for Disney, the guy who like was, who signed Demi Lovato. Like yeah. people that like you will never get the chance to talk to. And like they were open books just talking about their process, their life. You get to learn so much. And that's what I got out of Berkeley. And I, and because I wasn't trying to take, because I was, I was immediately like, well, I might as well just learn as much as I can. And just <laughs> crazy thing, you learn. <laughs> and yeah. then you get to build better relationships with people. I mean, that's not to say like they, those people don't even know who the hell I am, but or how they influence me. But my peers, the musicians, they all will know me like that. They all just like, oh, yeah, Luan, he's just like that cool Australian dude we just used to hang out with. <laughs> And then if I do something cool and they're like, oh, well, I could help you out with that. Let's go. Like even yeah. my roommate, Tony, when I was first starting to get into content, like he's got 3 million plus followers as a piano player. And, you know, because there was like, I was kind, you know, and like I supported them. I was like, man, you guys got this. You guys going to crush it. You're going to crush it. You're going to crush it. Like he was able to, he was like, if I asked him, I asked him, I was like, oh man, if you mind, if you ever get a free minute, I would love to just like ask you about like content creation if you could help me out. Two seconds later, he's like, you're free for FaceTime. And like, I was like, hell yeah. And then for an hour, he just like coached me on like my content. He's like, try this, try this, try this. Like, that's that's what you get. So whenever- The networking. Yeah. The networking is the secrets of musicianship. I I wouldn't aim for it to be networking because that was not me being like, if I'm friends with him and this works out, it could be. That was not how it worked. For me, it was like, like, yeah, for me, it was just like, wow, keep killing it. You guys are amazing. Just being a nice, like just chilling, vibing with people um, and like celebrating their wins and then just being like, you guys are going to crush it. Um, Helping them out where you can. You're not going to be perfect at it all the time, but uh, like I certainly wasn't. Like, but like if people see you as like, if you can humble yourself in the, in the way of like, you don't need to prove anything and you have no ego in the room and people who are better than you are going to want to be like, 
I want to help this person. <laughs> and and that that's crazy. Man, if yeah. if you're if you're underrated and like they're all like that there's two two ways it goes down. They're like one, they'll be like, "Oh man, this guy's really curious and he's trying. Like I want to help him out cuz like I anyone good will want to help." Like if they're not good, they they will not want to help. Like yeah. and then the other thing is it affirms that you, like if you crush it and you make it like you do really, really well, they'll be like, yeah, he did what I said, you know? <laughs> so you just like even further, like, like build, like they feel like this really amazing dopamine, like success, you know, thing for themselves. The only times that it's negative is when you take their gig. Yeah. That's the awkward one, but that, that doesn't happen all the time. And like I said, if you can build your career through content, um, like there's so much room for everyone to win, like even streaming and con- like there's just so much room for people to to jump in and win. But that that's how I'd approach musicians. Like every musician you can encounter, be like the first thing in your mind is like, what can I learn from this person? Yeah. Like and and honest to God, some of them, I've met some musicians that are so bad, so, so bad, but there's something that they're doing that's good. And like too many times people look at the bad things, whereas they're not looking at the good things. And they're not looking at like, well, what is the thing that's making these people successful? Because there's something that they're doing that's correct. Is it their branding? Is it their song choices? Is it the way they play their instrument? Is it their sound? Is it their look? Is it their persona? Like, you just don't know. Like, what are they doing on the back end? Like, there are some streamers that, like, you could look at and be like, man, why why are they winning? And then you look look behind the scenes and you can see that they're, like, heavily engaged in their community. And, like, these people just feel, like, this whole sense of purpose when they're around this person. And, like... You just don't know what they're doing that's so exceptional. So it's like, so always look at what the best thing that the musician has and then be like, what can I learn from them? And then ask them, like, can you help me out with this? Or like, oh, what, how did you approach that? Or how did you get that? Like, just be annoying. Um, Like literally to the point where they're like, dude, like, can we just play music? I don't want to talk to you about this. (laughs) (laughs) And that, that will, that will definitely help you. A lot. That's that's how I'd approach that. Okay. Yeah, but you're absolutely on the on an exceptional track, man. You're going to do so so well. Uh, you just like I said, patience is like finding what to do in the meantime. If you can just sit down and build the muscle of like practicing every day for like three four hours, you do that. Even if it's two hours, you put a timer and be like, I'm going to do great practice for two hours. And then every time you get distracted, you pause the timer until you get to two hours. Um, you will just crush. Like by the time you're 19, 20, you'll just, if you've got a feedback loop of you improving, you'll just know so much that like, it doesn't matter. It's like the same thing with Simon. Like Simon wants to get a scholarship to Berkeley. I'm like, that's the only path. There's no different path. There is just be exceptional. And if, and if you do be like, if the goal is like be exceptional and you achieve being exceptional, then (laughs) It becomes really easy to do lots of things because you don't have to try and sell. You don't have to try and be like, oh, like undercutting people. Like you literally like, this is my worth and, and I work really hard. Like I'm a nice person. I like, that's the easiest sell to anyone. <laughs> like They're like, oh man, this guy's great. Like let's hire him. Let's like play with him. Let's do like, it's so easy. So um, the hard stuff is like the, the, like get in with this booking agent, do this and like find these people. And like, like honest to God, in my mindset, I was like, this is way too much effort. I was like, what if I just practice everything a lot and then do a good job? Good things will happen. And lo and behold, it worked. That's <laughs> right. what I do with the content. That's <laughs> what I do with the content. I just post the content. I'm like, oh, we guess let's get better every time. So, right. so yeah. So hopefully that helps. Yes, it did. It did. 
Oh yeah. Well, it's better. It was cool that we had this chat because I had the chat with uh, Luke the other day, um, a couple of days ago, and it was just me working, him and I pulling our hair out trying to work Ableton. <laughs> <laughs> he had Ableton Light, and I had to figure out how to make it work. Oh my god, it was it was it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, dude, um, practice hard. It was lovely to see you today, and I'm so glad to see you jumping in on the community. I've hosted those uh, feedback Fridays for you, um, so you guys can like get access to them quicker. But, dude, it was really cool to see you jump in and do some recording as well. So, yeah, awesome, thank you, appreciate it. Hell yeah! All right, man. Well, n- anything else you you need, or you're all good now? No, I'm all good. Thank you. Hell yeah. All right, dude. Well, I'll see you during the week. Hopefully this week, this week I'm good, but I think we're baby number two arrives very soon. So (laughs) yeah, we'll see how we go. All right. I'll chat to you soon, buddy. Peace out. All right. Bye. (laughs)